what I have down here is create two other methods. We can see here generate tick bars and generate dollar bars that will handle all the code logic to finally get those alternative bars as, as well as their respective plots with these two methods below. Here I have used the machine learning film lab package from Hudson and Thames. So a big shout out to Jack Gilbert and colleagues for introducing very interesting concepts into a Python package to all of that. And be sure to go ahead and take a look at their GitHub project and project docs for examples and other implementations, not only on dynamic data structures, but on other whole bunch of approaches to financial data science. In the machine learning uh, film lab package, there are three main representations, dollar, tick, and volume bars. Now, let me get back to another slide and I will explain how we understand intuition about them very briefly. Uh, starting from the idea that all the bars take the tick as the base object, some of them extract more or less information from those ticks. Let's make some binary comparisons. We are here in the tick versus volume bars. In the case of tick bars, they just count each transaction without accounting for other values present in the data. In the case of volume bars, each transaction is weighted by the size. So if we compare tick and volume bars as both of them taking ticks as base objects, volume bars will reach the threshold much more rapidly based on the size of the transactions, giving let's say more ability to adapt if we can see that greater sizes are important for us. In the case of dollar bars versus volume bars, both of them take a weighted factor from the reference tick base object. Here, it, it depends on how you understand market activity. If you believe that market activity is a function of the sizes or if it is of the bout or soft prices that has some relevance in this modeling, uh, you will need to decide based on those two approaches, you will kind of uh, select one of the bars or another. Other bars that I also personally know about are range bars, which are created on a certain price movement threshold. Plain range bars give information about the volatility, but not specifically about the activity that is happening. Let me stop here with this type of bar so that I can develop further when I revisit these tutorials in some time forward. Let's get back to the code. To generate the alternative bar representations, we need to load the bit and ask tick data CSV, like we do here, and read it with pandas. We will then generate the mid price and finally, just select three columns like the timestamp, the mid price, and another one for the volume. Bear in mind here that the volume won't be reliable because we are using best bit and offer ticks. And we just use that column so that the code actually works. Afterwards, we just need to call the method to generate the bars and generate afterwards the returns to be able to make uh, different plots that we'll see in just some seconds. Finally, we save those parts in another dictionary indexed by the keys with the symbol strings of the assets that form the, the portfolio. Furthermore, these more sophisticated representations exhibit more optimal statistical properties compared to time bars, such as more normality in case we want to use them in more advanced statistical methods, such as machine learning algorithms. This is illustrated in this image that you can find in the machine learning film lab docs. This is also illustrated in our just generated plots. Let's get back to the code and see the plots. I have made up a script called researcher study 2.0 so that you can directly generate plots you want. Returns, distributions, or even QQ plots are implemented onto the research study class just down below here and depending on the different alternative bars that you want to generate finally. So you can play around with the parameter value and see what comes up. If you go to the plots folder, you can find the plots for the alternative bars. In this case, uh, I have generated 1,522 tick bars uh, with that parameter of the threshold like that. Uh, and I'm just showing you them in a slideshow here in my, in my screen. 
uh, those plots can be found onto the plots orders folder and also the tame based bars plots uh, can be found onto the plots underscore 5t folder. The final conclusion, if we look at the portfolio level to both representations, we can observe how the kurtosis values for the five minute time bars are on average greater than the ones of the tick bars. Furthermore, time-based bars exhibit a greater maximum skew than the tick bars. So, as I said, these more sophisticated representations actually exhibit more uh, statistical or more optimal statistical properties compared to other time-based bars, and they result in more normality uh, approximation that can be very suitable to more uh, advanced uh, statistical methods such as machine learning, like I just said. This is the end of this video. I hope that you have liked the approach and the implementations. Remember that we will return to them very soon and uh, that you can play in the meantime with the open source machine learning film lab library. Until then, by yourself. And the most important idea for me though that I hope you have internalized is that even with best bit and offer tick data, we can generate very valuable and more interesting data structures for our analysis and posterior modeling. So stay tuned for the following video in which I will dissect a bit more these sophisticated representations and create a production-like modeling implementation and framework for them and to be revisited also on the future.